That's right. It's the very first ever episode of Carolina's own Pod Force 5. I'm Frax Howitzer, and on today's show, we're going to take a look at the entertainment biz through the eyes of Carolina Film Community, based here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Kevin O'Connor will be taking us on location and talking to Julie Emmons about how to get involved in the film biz, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Also, Kona Kyoto will be here to introduce some of you to the world of prop making and costume design in a great spot we call Cosplay Corner. So tune in and see some behind the scenes magic that you can do on your own. Also, we're going to visit a local business that promises to offer a lot to the local film and theater community, Barnador. Nat Rath will be talking to some other people in our area that can help you find great deals on stuff to get a really cool costume put together or push your special effects makeup skills over the top. All that and more in this episode of Carolina's Own Pod Force 5. It's all yours, Kevin. here, Carolina's own Pod Force 5, here on location at Dilworth Neighborhood Grill. We're here for the monthly Carolina Film Community meeting. We're going to see what's going on tonight, meet some people, see some of the action. We're going to play some few films and uh, networking events tonight, and I uh, wanted to share it with you all. Come on in. Hi everyone, Kevin O'Connor here. Today I'm with Julie Emmons. Julie is with the Carolinas Film Community and she's going to share a little bit about herself and what this is all about. Hi Julie. Hi. How are you doing tonight? I'm well, thank you. Would you share with our audience a little bit about yourself and, and what it is that CFC is trying to do? Um, sure, absolutely. Um, so I founded Carolina Film Community, which uh, actually was Charlotte Film Community up until a couple of years ago. We founded it in 2009. And the idea behind that was just we wanted to make a community for people to come together, to network, to make relationships, to make films, and just kind of be together and promote film, to learn about film, and to educate the community on filmmaking. Sounds great. So how would somebody get involved with CFC? What would they do? Oh, it's really easy. Every month we have a monthly meeting, so you can just show up with these monthly meetings. And uh, there's lots of people here to meet. And just kind of being a part of that, networking together with everybody here is a really great way. You can always email the people involved. We have a leadership team, which would be happy to talk to anyone. So it's really easy. So every first Tuesday of the month, typically, mm -hmm. we're here at the Dilworth Neighborhood Grill right. in downtown Charlotte. And there's a Facebook group that they can look up. Is there right. not? Right, there is. What's the title for um, that? It's Carolina Film Community. And we do meet on the first Tuesday of every month, unless there's a holiday. So typically in July, because of July 4th, sometimes in January, depending on when uh, the first falls. Um, and, you know, we meet here at Dilworth, unless, again, something happens. But we always make that very public. You can find it on our website, which is carolinafilmcommunity.com. Yeah. You can find it on Facebook, which is Carolina Film Community. We have a Twitter, we have an Instagram. We're easy to find. Yeah, and a couple of times a year, there's a there's a, an award show or a, a right. series of film, uh, like we met at the Studio Movie Grill at right. the Epi Epicenter uh, early, or in December of last year? Uh, September. Se mm -hmm. September, and, and there's a cute few uh, special events throughout the year as well. That's right, yes. So uh, what can we look forward to in the upcoming months with CFC? What are um, some of the highlights? Well, we're going to have a really exciting competition this year, and same thing with September, City of Movie Grill, we're going to have a really exciting awards ceremony. This year, our competition, it's different every year, this year it's going to be documentary style. Uh, it's going to be really fun, we're going to have short documentaries, and it's going to have to do with the Carolinas, you're going to go find a story, it has to be, how do we say it, uh, it has to be perceived as real, I guess it necessarily has to be real, it has to be perceived as real. Uh, which is interesting. Like Blair Witch Trial? Yes. Like um, the haunting of... Deborah Logan? Um, that's actually fiction, but <laughs> more like the Devil's Trampling Ground, if you've ever heard of that in North Carolina. That is a lore that a lot of people believe actually has fact behind it. So, more like that, or it can be real, it can be absolutely 100% real. So, um, it's going to be really interesting to see what these filmmakers come up with. We're going to have an award show like we always do, and this year it's going to be a little different. Instead of having a judging panel of celebrities that we've always had, this year we're going to let the community judge. 
Sounds great. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Well, Julie, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I've been a part of the CFC for three and a half, four years, and I find it to be very, very informative. The networking of the filming community is very strong here in Charlotte, and uh, it's great to be a part of. So look us up and come on out and join us some night. Definitely. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Tony Kyoto, and this is the Carolina Pod Force 5. Cinco. And we are talking today about basic items that you can use for prop making. So your first item that you're probably interested in learning about is how do, how do I make, usually the most question, the questions that I get are, Kona, how do you make such big props and they don't weigh a ton? And it's super easy. There is something called pink insulation foam. Some people also call it XPF foam or XPS, whichever. Um, and you can actually find this stuff, it's super cheap. You can find it at like Home Depot, Lowe's. You, those are usually the popular spaces to do it, to get it from. Um, you can find this stuff uh, at those places and they usually cost for about like a, like a big square of it. I can't quite recall the dimensions. They're usually five bucks a, a sheet and it's so thick that it's like, it's literally about like an inch and a half thick. It's amazing. You can take this, you can cut out the shape of your prop and then you can sand it down and then you have your prop all set, ready to go. Another really inexpensive way to use, or excuse me, to make props and even armor is EVA foam. EVA foam, you can find it at some local hardware stores. You can also find it at Walmart. It's also best known as the inner interlocking yoga mats or even the mats that you use to tile the floor of your home gym or anything like that. So those basically are some of the things that you can use. You can just basically the same thing with the pink foam. You cut it out, you sand it down to kind of make it your own. And then of course you can seal it with Mod Podge, wood glue, Elmer's glue. So this is some pretty inexpensive stuff. Also, if you want to do something a little more expensive, go to the more pricier route. There is something that's really handy. It's called Warbla. Warbla is a thermoplastic that you can create to a shape of your own by melting it with a heat gun. Now, we're not talking about like, you know, your hair dryer. We're talking like an actual heat gun. Like you have to buy this from Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store in your area. Um, you can actually find Warbla at a, on a website called cosplaysupplies.com for about like a small sheet, it's like $28. And then of course, as you go up to the larger sizes, like a jumbo size would be $80. So there's a bunch of sizes that you can um, consider. And also you can actually order um, test sheets, or if you wanna try it out, you can order test sheets from cosplaysupplies.com. It's only $25 really cheap to get a test sheet so you can always try that out some interesting tools of the tray that you're going to need to kind of adhese the materials together in general with the exception of war blood because it actually sticks to itself the most important one that you're probably going to need is a glue gun glue gun basically hot glue you can find it at your craft store michael's joann's fabrics things of that nature also, a really good tool that you can use for basic or basic um, armor making, prop making, things of that nature is called contact cement. Contact cement you can find at your local hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, etc. Um, and you can definitely use that as a stronger adhesive to make sure that your things bond together because sometimes hot glue, you have it and then it'll fall apart depending on the material, like if you want to use XPF foam, maybe maybe um, hot glue isn't the best for you. So you might want to use like foam glue or contact cement. However though, keep in mind with pink foam, contact cement actually eats it. So you can use the contact cement with like EVA foam. Um, other than that, another really great tool to use to carve out your props, you can also use um, like a utility knife. It's actually easier to use a very sharp utility knife or even an X-Acto knife to carve out your props versus scissors 
because scissors will dull your costumes and it'll make it it'll make it look kind of crappy. And you can use a and, and a utility knife to cut out the mold or cut out the shape of whatever you're making. It'll be super precise, super sharp, and really, really, really good looking. So this has been Connie Kyoto. I hope I've filled your heads with some knowledge about the world of, of prop making. Thanks for watching. This is the Carolina Pod Force 5. Hey guys, it's Nat Rath here with Carolina's own Pod Force 5, and I'm here at Barnador in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. I'm here to interview Aubrey Young. Hi. You guys have a bit of unique stuff here, all around here. Lots of fantastic items here. Where did you find all this stuff? Jamie's been collecting for years. Um, he is a costume and designer here in Charlotte, and um, he's very well established here. And so this is just kind of some of the stuff is his collection that he's amassed. Great collection. Do you guys work with any film groups or theater groups? We work with a lot of theater groups here in Charlotte, CPCC, um, Actors Theater, Children's Theater, Theater Charlotte. We do a lot of high school productions too. Nice. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of people we like to work with. Are there any discounts that folks out there should know about? Um, we do extend discounts to a lot of the schools and companies that we work with, um, but we also keep our social medias up to date, so our Instagram or Facebook will post any information about sales or discounts going on. Nice! You guys should go check them out after this. There will be a link down below. <laughs> Are there any other things that anyone should know about? Um, we have a lot of hidden treasures here, so when you come, Ooh. be prepared to dig. Um, <laughs> I promise you won't be disappointed in what you find. Do you mind if I do some digging right now? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Nat, we gotta go. We gotta get. Now, I don't wanna go, but I have to. But you guys should come check out the store. with Carolina's own Pod Force 5 and I'm here to interview Megan Grant. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Megan and I'm from the Get Dead crew. We make special effects for film conventions, we do music videos, and we teach classes and make tutorials. Oh, that sounds really, really cool. So what have you, what have you got for us today? Today we are going to learn how to make some textured monster skins. You can turn these into lizards, you can turn these into zombies, you can make whatever you want out of these. It's really up to you and the color scheme and textures you decide. You can really spend as long as you want doing this and gets a lot of different textures into it. You can make it whatever you want, just let your creativity come through when you're sculpting. So we're gonna jump ahead to the one that we already made. And put it on her. 
Yay, the fun part. Yay! Well, actually, all of that really sounded like a lot of fun. So, to put the latex prosthetic on her, we're going to use liquid latex to adhere it, because nothing sticks better to latex than latex. Now, whenever you're using latex, make sure that you're not allergic to it, and that the person you're putting on is not allergic to it. Are you allergic to latex? No. Nope. Nope, Hooray! We're good. <laughs> if she was, we would use the Nox Gelatin option. So the best thing about latex is it lasts for a really long time. It does stay on the skin. It's uh, pretty much like a skin super glue. That being said, it will take out any little itty bitty body hair that you might have. So we're gonna put her application on her <laughs> inner arm today where there's much less hair. Actually rather smooth. Oh, thank you. Now, from start to finish, how long would you say this process usually lasts? Like, if for a cosplayer, how, how much in advance do they want to prep anything like this? Um, honestly, it took me about 10 minutes last night <laughs> to make this one. So it really depends on what you're sculpting and how much detail you're trying to put into your prosthetic. Um, something that's going to be larger and have a lot deeper holes to fill is going to take longer to dry, so you want to make sure you have plenty of time and maybe start it a couple of days before you would need it. The application itself, again, depends on something this mm -hmm. small, you know, five, ten minutes, we'll have it painted and done. If you're doing like a whole face or you're covering your body in this, it would obviously take a little bit longer. So now I'm just kind of feathering the latex out along the edges here. Paint me like one of those French guys. <laughs> so I'm just going to start by kind of putting some fleshy tones warming everything up around the edges here. pretty well. We've blended everything out. We've added the color. So the last step is to add some fake blood. So you can get a lot of depth with just the blood alone. So where can we find you if somebody wants to come and watch like a live demo? Do you have any appearances coming up or? Yeah, actually our next appearance is going to be March 24th through the 26th. We will be at Mad Monster Party in Rock Hill, South Carolina. So come out and party with us and see some monsters. We'll be set up there and we'll have a table so you can come and see us and get some cosplay enhancements on and ask us any questions you might have. Right on. And one more time just for shameless plugging, where can we find you? You can find us at Get Dead Crew on all social media handles. Well, I'm Josephine Lotus with Carolina's own Pod Force 5. This is Megan Grant with the Get Dead Crew. It's been fun. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Charlotte's Pod Force 5 here with Kona Kyoto. We're going to review some events that are happening the rest of the month uh, throughout March.
So between March 11th and 12th, we have Repticon Reptile and Exotic Animal Convention at Cabrera Serenas and Events Center. Ooh, you can see some exotic animals. Nice. Coming up on March 12th, we have the first performance for the Charlotte Dance Festival. It's at the Center for Dance on Tryon. Second performance coming on the 18th of March at the Duke Energy Theater. And then on March 6th, we have Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon with Wildlands in-store event at the Microsoft Store in the South Park Mall, which is an amazing store. I think it's so much fun to go there. <laughs> I'm definitely going to catch that. On March 7th, the first Tuesday of the month, we have the Carolina Film Community Monthly Meeting. This is at the Dilworth Neighborhood Grill, and the cost of the meeting is typically $10 if you're not a member, or $5 if you are a member. Come on and check that out. Ooh, that sounds like a whole lot of fun. It is. Wow. Definitely hit that up. Between February 23rd and March 12th, a streetcar named Desire is going to be at the Armor Street Theater. Hmm. And coming up on March 9th, the Game of Thrones live concert experience. Wow. It's at the Spectrum Center. Uh, tickets are between $40 or $100. I definitely want to check that out. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm such a huge fan of Game of Thrones. Me too. Winter <laughs> is coming. Winter is coming. It feels like it's, it's coming over now. It's so hot outside. <laughs> anyway. And on March 10th, we have a free master class with Dr. Chuck Davis at the Pease Auditorium at 7 p.m. So you get to take a special class with him. And on top of that, the next night, they're having a jazz show called A Tree Without Roots by, obviously, Dr. Chuck Davis at the same auditorium. Tickets are usually $15 through $25, so that's the price range. Very nice. Well, those are the announcements for the rest of March, and wanted to let you know we're going to send you over to Frax. Sorry. Apologize in advance. <laughs> So here's what I'm saying, and I'm saying it now. The television industry in general is going to be all you upstart YouTube wizards and Instagram Snapchatty Twitter trumps to a pulp if you don't get with it. They're figuring the game out at this point, and your guys' time in the golden light is dwindling. You got it? What? You don't grasp what I'm saying here? Well, listen up. The internet changed the game in the entertainment world, you dig? There was an access to the media like there had never been before, and as you computer dudes and dudettes out there know, anything can be hacked. Once a DVD copy of anything was out there, it was going to be online in weeks, streaming away in people's living room. Theaters began to feel the burn, just like TV stations and advertising companies felt the burn with the dawn of TiVo and DVR tech. For a while, there was a straight up golden age of shared media that really stuck it to the man. But the war had just begun and there were few generals able to fight the fight. It was the war for advertising dollars and making the media still find a way to be a cash cow for their parent company. It was the independent YouTubers and vloggers and podcasters chance to step in and make a living in a market that was previously closed to outsiders. The floor is still open of course, and I'm always willing to argue with you about my opinions, but I think the big studios are figuring things out at this point, and without more of you independent types organizing yourselves into something that can compete, by collaborating just like they do, you're going to lose the war. You won some great battles during the late 90s to 2010, but the tide is a turning and your clock is a ticking. So sayeth the frats. <laughs>